Just before creating my next project's tutorial, which would be using a PIR sensor, I thought I may create a separate tutorial explaining the working of a PIR sensor. By doing that, I will be able to keep my other tutorial short and to the point. So without wasting time, let's discuss what is a PIR sensor and how can we use it in our project. What is a PIR sensor? PIR or passive infrared sensor is a polyelectric IR sensor which generates energy when exposed to heat. Everything emits low level of radiation. The hotter the object is, the more radiation is emitted. When a human or animal with infrared radiation wavelength of 9.4 UM approaches the sensor, it detects the heat in the form of infrared radiation. The sensor only detects the energy emitted by other objects and don't produce any. That's why these sensors are called PIR or passive infrared sensors. These sensors are small, cheap, rugged, low power and very easy to use. For this tutorial we need a breadboard, a Arduino Uno Nano whatever is handy, a PIR sensor, a LED and a 220 ohm current limiting resistor to test the connectivity, few connecting cables, a USB cable to upload the code to the Arduino and general soldering equipments. As we can see the sensor has two sides, top or the sensor side, bottom or the component side. The top consists of a specially designed high density polythene cover called Fresnel lens. This lens focuses the infrared rays to the underlying polyelectric sensor. 9.4 UM infrared rays can easily pass through this polythene cover. The sensor sensitivity ranges from 6 to 7 meters and the detection angle is 110 degrees by 70 degrees. The actual sensor is inside a sealed metal can. The can basically protects the sensor from noise, temperature and humidity. There is a thin window made of IR transmissive material to allow the IR signals to reach the sensor. Behind this window are two balanced PIR sensors. In idle state, both sensors detect the same amount of IR radiation. When a warm body passes by, it first intercepts one of the two sensors, causing a positive differential change between the two halves. And then when the object leaves the sensing area, the reverse happens and the sensor generates a negative differential change. When the pulse changes or, in other words, the PIR sensor detects motion, the output pin changes to digital high or 3.3 volts. The bottom bit consists of a bunch of circuitry. Few of them are of our interest. Most PIR sensors have three pins, VCC, ground and out. VCC and ground are to power the module. Operating voltage is between 5V to 20V. The output pin is the one which communicates with the microcontroller by sending digital pulse high, which is 3.3V, when a motion is detected, and digital low, 0V, when no motion is detected. The pinouts may vary between modules, so always triple check the pinouts. The BISS0001 or the MicroPower PIR Motion Detector IC gets the output from the sensor and after doing some minor processing, it produces the digital output. The module has two potentiometers, one to adjust the sensitivity, which is up to seven meters, and the other one to adjust the time for which the output signal should stay high when an object is detected. It ranges from 0.3 seconds to five minutes. There are three more pins on this module with a jumper between them to select the trigger modes. First one is called non-repeatable trigger. This one goes low as soon as the delay time is over. Second one is called repeatable trigger. It stays high as long as the object is in the proximity and will turn off once the object is gone and the delay is over. I will be using this mode in this project. Connect the VCC to the positive 5 volt rail of the breadboard. Connect the ground to the negative rail. Connect the LED along with the 220 ohm resistor to the output pin of the sensor. Now, when the sensor detects a motion, the output pin goes high and the LED will light up. Move back and forward to find out the sensing range. Then to test the duration, walk in front of the sensor and then walk away and use a stopwatch to find out how long the LED stayed on. You can adjust the time and sensitivity by adjusting the potentiometers on the board. Now to do the same with an Arduino, connect the VCC of the PIR sensor to the 5V pin of Arduino. Then connect the output pin to D13 and ground to the ground pin of Arduino. Now connect the LED along with the 220 ohm resistor to the D2 pin of Arduino. That's it. Now you just need to upload the code and test if everything works the way it should. 
You can replace the LED with a buzzer to raise an alarm when an object is detected or a relay to drive a high voltage circuit. To learn more about relays, please have a look at my tutorial number 4 which is driving a relay with an Arduino. You can find the link in the description section below. The code is very simple. Start by defining the pin number 2 and 13 as LED pin and PIR pin respectively. Then we need to define the pin modes, LED pin to be the output pin and PIR pin to be the input pin. Next we need to read the value of the PIR pin and see if it is high. If the value is high, then turn on the LED, otherwise turn it off. So this is my setup for the testing of the PIR sensor. The sensor is hooked up to the breadboard and is sitting on the table. As I'm in front of the sensor, the LED is on. Now let's do a quick test. Currently the sensor is in its idle state. I'm going to walk in front of it to activate the sensor. Ta-da! The light just turned on after detecting my presence. The light stays on as long as I'm in the sensor's proximity. Okay, let's walk away and start my stopwatch to see if it turns off after 5 seconds. Success! Everything worked the way I wanted. PIR sensors can be used to automate opening and closing of doors, automate all outdoor lightings, automate lights of basement, garden and covered parking areas, automate lift lobby or common staircase lights, to detect presence of human and raise an alarm, create a smart home automation and security system and many more. Thanks again for watching this video, I hope it helps you. If you want to support me, you can subscribe to my channel and watch my other videos. Thanks, see you again in my next video. Bye now.